Britain's emergency bikers are on the front line, racing to protect the public and save lives. And they've never been more crucial. With 33 million vehicles on UK roads, the country's congested cities and major routes are the busiest in Europe. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service provide help where it's most needed, fast. No reason you can have a lock knife, straightforward offence. How many bangs did you hear? On emergency bikers, a suspected bomb in Birmingham city centre. Injuries from bombs, they are horrific. They are really severe. A suspect does a runner. It's just gone in there. And a four-year-old is reported to have amputated his thumb. If you just look the other way then, you, you just move your hand, Mum. Move your hand. Move your hand. Birmingham and the biker paramedics are on standby in the city centre, admiring Steve Harris's attributes. Protective padding, you know. So you need to pad the front out, but not the back. You don't need to protect your spine. And... Well, I, might, I wouldn't land on my back. How do you know? Because I'm front ever. <laughs> They're a tight-knit trio, and no one's in any doubt that contributes to their success. If you think about it, we're at work 12 hours a day. I probably spend more time with Stephen Barry than I do uh, at home with my own wife. I do think that's why it works so well. I think personally I make them feel young because I always play practical jokes and, and all the rest of it. Me first, after you. He's always winding people up. <laughs> he can be very tiresome. I, mean, yeah. he's, he's, I suppose he's a lovable rogue. <laughs> Because we're such a small unit, it, it's vitally important that we get on with each other. We have to get on. We, we can't afford internal frictions. We can't afford uh, to fall out. Three of us in leathers. <laughs> You've got about YMCA. You're always hanging around them clubs. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and you know the music. <laughs> <laughs> you taught me the moves. <laughs> but when a call comes in, they're poised for action. On their Yamaha FJR 1300's top speed 130, they race to emergencies within an eight mile radius of the city center. Carrying everything a traditional ambulance has, they're trained to deal with anything. It's an awful lot of bloody, where's it coming from? Just brace against them. <laughs> and to capture the action, we've put special cameras on each rider and bike, so we arrive at the scene the second they do. mid-morning and there's a report of a suspicious package in the city centre just two months after a scare at Birmingham Central Library and another at a police station in Moseley. On call, Steve Harris. Do you want two details received? He races across the city, covering just under half a mile in just over a minute to be the first paramedic on scene. What's the problem? Suspect device, we don't know what it is yet. Okay. It's just wrong day for hearing it or something. 212, Roger understood. I am on scene now, uh, liaising with police. They're just evacuating the immediate area. Fellow biker paramedic Mark Hayes has the latest update. There's um, a package in a cage uh, with the word Fang Bang written on the package, which obviously they're taking as sus. The suspected target is the Refugee Council, the largest in the UK, which helps asylum seekers. More ambulances have been called. Police are creating a 300-yard exclusion zone. 300 people have been evacuated from offices and flats. Fire engines are arriving. Station Commander Hilton. We've got two fire appliances. We've also got our um, DIM unit, which is uh, analyzes and can um, take samples and determine what sort of uh, powders or gases are, are about. So they can do that analytical process, uh, which assists in uh, dealing with these types of incidents. This is looking serious. 
The bomb disposal squad has been called in from Wales. Steve's fearful of what he might have to deal with. Memories of the 1974 IRA pub bombing is still abide, when 19 people were killed and more than 180 injured. Blast injuries, uh, injuries from bombs, they are horrific. Obviously, uh, flesh can be shredded. Uh, they are really severe. And Steve knows paramedics who had to deal with the aftermath. To a man, they were all saying how horrific it was, how nothing up to that point had prepared them uh, for the sheer carnage that uh, they saw in front of them. And it's not just the possible blast that the emergency services might have to contend with. If anyone gets decontaminated, they're going to do their emergency decontam with these guys down here in the car park. Right. Um, so currently, we're, we're, we're OK, just on standby on medical. OK. And it's causing chaos in the city. We're closing all the main roads surrounding and um, railway lines that run above and the tram line, the metro. So obviously the knock-on effect for that because it's sitting there, it's going to be, it's going to be gridlock, it's going to be a nightmare. The city will be at a standstill for hours, as well as the rail lines and roads, a stretch of the canal network also has been closed. Taking it very seriously, the knock-on effect throughout the day for members of the public and for emergency services, for everything else that's going on in and around the city, it's going to have a massive knock-on effect. The bomb disposal squad have now gone into the building. They're formulating a plan as to what they're going to do. I understand they, uh, they may just open the package, see what's inside, and then analyse any contents. A tense hour passes. But at last, there's news. Package uh, currently of um, newspaper within a bag. Uh, that is going to x ray it, make sure there's nothing else with it. Uh, we are expecting to get the stand down shortly, but certainly no more resources required. The package is uh, a bag of uh, a flower bag, a bag uh, contained flower with rolled up newspaper inside. But the police are on the case. Superintendent Sue Southern. It is now a crime scene, and we will carry out a full investigation to bring to justice the person that's responsible for, for today, today's events. What I can't rule out, um, given the location, it is a refugee centre, it's an asylum centre, um, that this doesn't have a racist angle to it. Um, and again, that will form part of our investigation and we'll keep an open mind in terms of, of what the motivation for this was today. And Steve reckons you can never be too careful. Over recent years, you've become more and more aware that at any time something could happen. I think, you know, the situation uh, throughout the world dictates there's no reason why it could not happen in Birmingham and the reason we're here today it just shows how vigilant people must be and yes it could happen. Police are still looking for the hoaxer. After the break a suspect does a runner. He's just gone in there. And a child's reported to have cut off his thumb. If you just look the other way then Move your hand, Mum. Move your hand. Essex, South End on Sea, home to the world's longest pier and the resort that welcomes six million visitors every year. It's also the stamping ground of new biker cop recruit, PC Lucy Watson. I don't live a million miles away. It's it's my closest seaside town. I have been known to come down here for a walk along the front with my husband and a bag of fish and chips or bring my granddaughter down for a little go on the beach or play on the amusements occasionally. It's, it's a typical seaside town really. And she couldn't be happier to be on patrol near home. As a town to police I love it. It's busy. There's always something happening here. You, you could never get bored. I just think it's important that everyone gets to enjoy the town without being hassled by people who have decided to play up, really. As a community biker cop, Lucy will be dealing with far more than just traffic, cruising the streets on her BMW R1200 RT. It's reported that a man on a curfew order 
and banned from the seaside resort has been spotted in town. Lucy's dispatched to investigate. The man gives a name, but Lucy's not convinced. Okay. Got any ID with you at all? Uh, not on me, no. Have you ever been nicked or anything? No, driving. Right. What's that doing here? Please. Huh? We, we're not like this, we're like family members. Lucy is suspicious and checks the description of the man banned from town. Fix Hango 55, got a mail here. Just confirm the details of the mail that's wanted. Description, if possible, please. Money anyway. yeah. At the moment, I believe you're. Lucy's found him out and he makes a run for it. While the other officers give chase on foot, Lucy takes to her bike to get ahead of him and cut him off. I'm back on the bike. and a tactic pays off. He's just gone in there. I think he's just gone in there. Hello, mate. Can you get to come out for us? Um, there's no one here. Blake, could just run in the front door? I believe he's just gone into the premises. Uh, I've got the back contained. As Lucy comes back to the front of the house, the other officers spot the man down the road. Within seconds, he's nicked. Yeah, 5-5, five, five, thank you. Right, I'm going to hang on to you now. Yeah, You understand why, don't you? My hat's down there somewhere. I'll put it on the car. Oh, it's a bit hot for this not running It's not a good idea to run away when I nick you, is it? I just panicked. Oh, you already said the words. Yeah, 5-5, five, five, he's cuffed. He's just detained, he's all gone. How do you know where we were? Or didn't you? you just... That's for me to know and you to find out, isn't it? You're walking around with a tag on your ankle, mate. Got to give it a go. I got away twice today with it. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't met me before, though, have you? Well, mate, when you, you, you weren't the one that was running, were you? You tried running in this lot? Well, it's not my problem, is it, mate? My problem is to get away, mate. <laughs> you didn't know, did you? From you, I did. <laughs> He's been wanted <laughs> for breaching his uh, conditions of his tag, I believe. You know, at my age, the chances of me catching someone that age... He's clearly very fit anyway, even if I was dressed in running shoes, they're probably slim. Dressed like this, I stand no hope, which is why I jumped on the bike, because had he got any distance... The officers chasing again get quite tired, at least I could uh, make ground on the bike, but um, yeah, he didn't get very far, so we've got him. Birmingham. Every year in the UK, over a million children under 15 have accidents in the home. A 999 has just come in. A four-year-old is thought to have cut his thumb off. On call, Marques. Mark covers nearly three miles in just under four minutes to be the first on scene. Hello. What's he doing? See where he's got a sewing machine upstairs, right? Right. And apparently where he, his hands just come trapping, his put his, he's lifted it up basically himself. Lifted the sewing machine? Sewing machine head up. Yeah. And his finger trapped inside, so he's put his... Um, okay. Thing basically, his thumb's almost off, you know, to be honest. Oh, I'll have a little look. He's a big brave boy. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. what's his name? Mohammed Zakiri. So Mohammed. Mohammed, can I have a little look at your poorly thumb? Is that okay? Not sure how bad the injury will be, Mark wants the other children to leave the room. Um, if it is nasty, you might want to... Go, 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 go. Right. 
If you just look the other way then, you, you just move your hand, Mum. Move your hand. Move your hand. It's okay. It's okay. Just keep him distracted. Need to get this tissue. Keep still. Oh, it's okay, it's just a tip. He's a big brave boy. Okay. Can you bend your thumb for me? Can you do that for me? Oh, you're a big brave boy. Well done. Okay, I'll pop a little dressing on. Looks a lot worse than it is. He's got good movement there. Um, it just seems to be the, uh, the tip of his thumb. All right. Can I touch your thumb and you tell me if it hurts? Does it hurt there at all? Yeah, okay, good boy. Should we take you to hospital and get that made better for you? Some magic medicine, yeah. Good boy. There's no easy way of dressing these, they are quite awkward, so. There's a good boy, aren't you? Mum, can you just hold that there for me? Okay, I'll find out how long um, the ambulance is going to be. Failing that, what we could do, if you have transport yourself, pop him in the car and I'll follow you up to the hospital. He's got a car idea, we can just take him to the hospital. Okay. No we we'll pop another one over there, Mohammed. Good boy. He's brave, huh? Got a big thumb now, haven't you? Can you hold that on there again, Mum? As you've got him elevated, that's, that's brilliant. That's how we need to keep it. Okay. All right, just to re reduce the bleeding. You're brave, aren't you? Yeah? You are a big boy. Big brave boy. Yeah? Unfortunately, Mohammed's bravery can't be rewarded with a trip in an ambulance. They've had to cancel the ambulance. Uh, somebody's decided to give birth, so <laughs> they've had to divert the ambulance. So what we'll do then is if we can pop him in your car, I'll give him some cowpaw, we'll pop him in the car. I'll follow you up to hospital. If you get concerned at all, just pull over. All right. After an eight-minute journey, Mohammed reaches hospital without shedding a tear. Good boy. Come on, then. Mark's managed to keep the top calm, and he knows just how. I, I think having children um, helps for you to get on the same sort of wavelength, and the fact that I'm the big kid of the unit, really, I suppose. Essex and PC Lucy Watson's on patrol in her hometown, South End on Sea. She's on her way to a possible burglary. A man's worried about a savings tin that has just been dumped over his garden wall. There you go. All oh, right, okay. Is this what? Yeah. The whole chuck, lot, yeah? Yeah, chucked it over the wall, emptied it out, and they've all that bits, all them bits up the road there. Bits of paper, they were chucking out, and uh, got up to the wall, went to it all out, and chucked it out. I don't know what they got away with. Right. These bits of paper just yeah. by the tree, yeah? Well, all the way down. I watched them come all the way up from um, the road just on the corner there. Describe them to me. Three males, it's an elderly male, about 40, beer belly, curly hair. Um, there's another male, 20, quite short, um, grey top, grey trousers. The other guy was naked to, from the waist up. He had short hair, he was about 18. OK, three descriptions when you're ready. Male one, white male in his 20s. Lucy radios details of the three suspects to control to pass on to other officers in the area. And there's some pieces of paper that they were dropping as they were walking away. The men have literally left a trail behind them. They've actually got an address on this one, so uh, it's quite possible that uh, there's a premises that's been recently burgled. Every piece of litter must be collected. It's potential evidence. This is the house that the um, paperwork relates to. Um, I've just looked through the letterbox. There's a dog on the landing, but there's no one answering at the moment. I'm just going to see if I can get through to a neighbour, see if I can have a look round the back. Hello there. Do you live here? Yes. Is it possible to get to the back garden from here? Could I come and have a look? Because we think they might have been broken into. <laughs> Lucy checks for forced doors or windows. If this is the burgled house, she needs to see if anyone's at home and make sure no one's hurt. There's no sign of um, entry from the back. It looks pretty grossy inside. But, um... 
Lucy tries knocking at the front door again and manages to gain entry. Impossible to say whether that's been burgled or not, to be honest. So the front door is completely insecure once you get through the main door. So we're back to plan A, we'll go and book the stuff in and uh, I'll put a note through just to say to contact us, giving her the incident number. Okay. No charges have been brought. Okay, lovely. Birmingham, and a call's just come in that a man has collapsed outside a bank in the city centre. 201, Roger, details received, over. Steve Harris is on scene within a minute, but no one appears to need his help. Where's the patient? We've been called to a gentleman with chest pains, uh, supposed to be outside this particular bank. At the moment, nobody's made themselves known, so we're just trying to find the patient. This delay could be wasting critical minutes. Steve checks in with control. Well, they're phoning the patient back to find, try and find out and see if he'll make himself known. 40 seconds later, Steve's sent to another address. Within half that time, he's found his patient. Hiya. Somebody thinks this is outside the bank. What's the problem? Burn some. Hey, how long you had the pain? Six years. No, you haven't had the pain for six years. Otherwise, you'd have found an ambulance six years ago. How long have you had the pain today? Five minutes, ten minutes, one hour? Five minutes. Five minutes. And does that pain go anywhere else? Just there? Hello? <clears throat> it's difficult to get any history out of this guy. He's still doing his blood pressure, his pulse and his oxygen levels are good. I'm just going to test his blood sugars just to see if uh, that's of any concern. An ambulance crew have arrived to help. Steve's checks have revealed nothing untoward, but he's smelt something. Uh, right, gentleman's been drinking. Uh, difficult to get any sort of history off him. He's holding his chest. Um, obviously appears to be in pain there. Yeah. Um, the man is taken off to the ambulance to monitor his heart, but some news comes in that may explain the man's predicament. It's just suddenly come to light. Uh, we are outside a betting shop and apparently uh, this gentleman has been evicted from the premises. Uh, he put some bets on, he's lost his money, he doesn't have his bus fare home. He was playing up inside the shop and the manager has evicted, uh, ejected him. Uh, that was when he uh, got his chest pain. Thank you. After the break, there's a surprise in the back of a van. But you don't mind your friend getting hurt if you have a crash then? Well, I mean, I was only sort of going from there to there. And an injured cyclist is going nowhere without his bike. You're not going to be able to ride a bike while you've got a spinal board strapped to your back. You might find it awkward to sit down. Birmingham, like any other city, peppered amongst its traffic, cyclists. Yeah, that's received. Thank you, mobile. RTC. In the UK, more than a thousand are killed or seriously injured every month, and a casualty has just been reported. Biker paramedic Mark Hayes races just over two miles across the city, arriving in three minutes, the first medic on scene. Hello there. How are we doing? Two bystanders are with the cyclist. Okay. He's got no uh, spinal pain at the moment. Full okay. Movement, his fingers and toes, no pins and needles anywhere. Just going to have a little feel of your neck. Tell me if you've got any pain at all, please. Any pain at all in your neck? No. None at all. No. Marvellous. Move your fingers for me. Move your feet for me. I'm just going to have a feel of your back. You had any drink at all? Maybe 10 bottles. Have you been drinking today? I had a few bottles. Yeah, OK. Booze is a problem. It could be masking potentially serious neck and back injuries. Mark can't take any risks. 
Because even though you've got no pain in your neck or your back, because you've had alcohol, I can't really uh, clear your neck safely to allow you to get up. Don't shake your head. So what we're going to do is we're going to mobilise you. We're going to pop you up to the hospital and get you checked. Backup has arrived and Mark completes a thorough top-to-toe check. OK. Any pain here at all? Any pain in your chest? Deep breath for me. Good, man. Any pain in your tummy? I don't hurt it. No way. No way. I'm going to scratch all of it. OK. Are you allergic to anything? Nah, not really, no. Open your mouth for me. You've got some blood in your mouth. I just want to check see whether you've lost any teeth. Nah, no, it's gone a long time ago. Were they? All right. When Mark takes a look, there are only a handful left. Put your tongue right out. Yeah. I was okay. brushing the teeth. All right. With what, mate? It's a wire brush. You've yeah, got, yeah, mate, yeah. you got blood in your mouth. Yeah, I know. It, OK. Man. I think you bit your tongue. Mark wants to get the man on a spinal board to minimise the risk of any serious injury. But the cyclist has other worries. You got my bike? Yeah, it's all been sorted. The police are going to ask one of the shops to look after it for you. No, I need the bike with me. You can't go on the ambulance, mate. I've got no... to take it with me. You can't go on the ambulance. There's no you can't room. leave my bike. Just relax, mate. Just relax. I'm trying to. But he comes up with a bright idea. I could, follow the, I could follow the ambulance and the bike. And yeah. I could go to the Don't work like that. You're not going to be able to ride a bike while you've got a Just spinal me. board strapped to your back. You might find Nothing it awkward to sit me. down. Right. Nothing wrong with me. Listen, we're not going to force treatment upon you, yeah? I'm telling you, nothing wrong with okay, me. OK, right. It's only a scratch. Just relax, mate. Just relax. There's nothing wrong with me. It's only a scratch. Look, look at all of them, man. It's what the cycles are, my life. Right. It's only a scratch. I know you're saying it's only a scratch. We have a job to do, and we're advising you medically. But he's determined to prove he's fit as a fiddle. Hey, blimey, Sheldon. Right, how do you feel now? Ready to ride. It smells. It absolutely reeks of alcohol. Not a modern alcohol. Not a newer. He disappears down the pavement. He's just gone into the pub and left his bike outside. It turns out there's a friend in there who'll take his bike for him. And now that he's got that sorted, he's happy to go to hospital. I think he's probably uh, anaesthetised. He tells us that he's had up to 10 bottles of a Jack Daniels. He likes his Jack Daniels. And he, he said he's addicted to cannabis. Obviously, uh, we always play it safe. We never take any chances. We can't force anybody. If he wants to get up, it, we're going to do more damage forcing um, immobilisation on him than him getting up on his own. You do the best you can, don't you? Essex, their crackdown on keeping the roads safe, has seen the biker cops nick more than 900 motorists in one month alone. In Southend-on-Sea, PC Lucy Watson's on patrol. Acting on a hunch, She's on the trail of a blue van. When it stops at the lights, Lucy can see that one of the brake lights isn't working. And when it turns off the main road, she pulls it over. A colleague joins her as backup. The driver thinks he knows why he's been stopped. Hello, officer. When I've put some stuff in the boot of my car today, I've knocked a, I've knocked a wire that's loose, and right. I've noticed that my left indicator on the back side. All right, your brake light's not working either. Oh, is it not? No, that's why oh, I've stopped you. Oh, right, well, I'll get that sorted. Okay. Sorry. Is it your van? Yes, and I'm all legal. OK. I've <laughs> just got my tax. Right, could you just jump out for us? Yeah, no problem. some checks and we'll yeah. let you get on your way. The paperwork is all in order, but there are some unusual sounds coming from the back. It's on the back. Oh, I, I, I've got my friend in the back, yeah. Why? Because I've got some, I've got some bits of materials in the back, some wood and that. And I Can just, I have a look? I wanted him to sit on them. I'm a plumber by trade. All right. Um, so all I've got in my back is my tools. I just didn't want to. I did that he's a plumber. I didn't want it. Don't say that. <laughs> I didn't want it flying all over the place. 
But you don't mind your friend getting hurt if you ever crash him? Well, I mean, he'd fly I, well I was only, I was only sort of going from there to there. But I didn't, I, I mean, I don't know, is it the criminal offence or something? Yes, sir. On the road traffic, it's been secure load. Oh, I didn't know Due that. passengers in the vehicle. I didn't know that. But ignorance is no excuse, I know that. Don't shut the door, because he's not carrying on in there. Oh, right, jump down then. What's, what's the name of your road? I'm only going around the corner. Yeah. Right. Uh, might not. You should be getting three points on your licence and a £60 fine for that, and safe carriage of passengers. Oh, God. All right. Take a smack on the hand today. You do not carry passengers in the back of a van. If you have a crash, and it doesn't have to be your fault, yeah. okay? What's going to happen to him? Yeah. Especially with Absolutely. all that stuff in there. Yeah, no kind. He's going to get completely mullered, and then we have an awful lot of paperwork to do. Your mate's walking home. Yeah. Okay, please don't do that again. Because okay, I work I this area all the time, and yeah. I'll, I will stop you know, again. I know that. I know all right? That. Yeah. I, no, I, I won't happen again. I don't I forget you. a face. I promise you. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that's sorted out. After to, well tomorrow I get paid so I'll make sure we can sort it out that night. Okay. Don't forget your seatbelt. Alright, nothing. Bye bye. Didn't realise, I says he doesn't realise, sometimes it has more effect just to educate people a little bit than keep dishing out tickets. So uh, that's the way I've dealt with that one tonight. The three paramedics can respond to as many as a hundred calls a week. They need to have their wits about them on high-speed rides and for making crucial on-the-spot decisions on grueling 12-hour shifts. But our three musketeers know exactly how to switch off. There's always been a bit of a banter in the city centre between ourselves and some of the store detectives. Um, they always think they're better than us. So I uh, thought, what about a better way to uh, end the, the argument than a, a paintball uh, battle? What are you going to bear in mind is that if you're nasty to us, at some point, you may need a paramedic in the city centre, and at some point, it may be one of us. <laughs> Mark has a tactic to keep the paramedic team safe. Hide behind Steve. <laughs> and it might just work. They're coming up in the centre. Up the centre, round to the right, Steve. Got him. One in the trench behind the wall there. Oh. Yay! Get down, sucker! Go on! Another store yeah. detective's down. <laughs> Go on! We're doing all right, are <laughs> We popped two of them off already. We're just waiting for them to come forward on us again. But Steve's been taken out. Came through the gaps in the uh, tree trunks. Yeah, it was a good shot. With time running out, it's Mark's chance to bring glory to the paramedics. No, Well, almost. Where? The afternoon ends on as even. Game over. It's been an absolute phenomenal day. It's been so much fun. Tremendous. It's just, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Who said fat blokes can't run, huh? <laughs> After the break, why nightlife doesn't impress Lucy. When I get drunk, they don't realise what they're doing, and that's when things go wrong. And Steve takes a shortcut. I've never done this before. Essex, South End on Sea. But behind the bright lights, the resort faces the same nightlife problems as many a bustling town in the UK. PC Lucy Watson is responding to a report that a girl has been spotted at the station brandishing a 15-inch knife. Stay here. I have not Just stay here. Okay, I'm going to search you. No, 
you ain't done nothing. Please don't grab me like that. Right, I'm not well, like stop it. walking away. I'm not going to okay. walk away. If you don't grab me, I won't walk right. away. Fair enough, yeah? As soon as I let go, have you started walking no, away? No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm not, look, I'll lean against the car okay, like that's that. Fine. Yeah, I'm not going to move. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? No. Have you got anything on you that might hurt me? No. Okay. No. Have you got a knife? No. Okay. Where does that allegation come from? Have you had a knife? Look at me. I'm speaking to you. Hello. You all right? Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. You? Yeah, not bad. I like him. He's the right he is. You know what I do? Not bad. Yeah, we've met before. Um, my colleague's going to have to give you a pat down just in case I you've got something I don't want her to. I want her to. Okay, right. well, maybe we can sort it out for you. Have you got anything on you that no, you shouldn't have? No, I haven't. Nothing but at all. Oh, no, little copper. All right. That's what's, why what, I want What have you got in your pockets? No, phone nothing. key, phone look, keys, wallet, anything look, like that? Nothing. No, that's all right. Look. That's not a problem. Okay. Why don't you want me to search you then? Because I don't know you. Oh, she's really nice. I'm ever I'm so sorry. nice. No, I want her searching me. You can trust Stop. me, she's really nice. Would I lie to you? No, you've yeah. never lied to there me. We go. You have never lied to me. Yeah, but no, I don't want her to. I don't know her. I don't you want to swap the cat just to make it easier? She doesn't like me, she won't let me search her, so rather than make an issue of it, are you alright to come and do it? Yeah, can you stay with Scott? Scott yes, of course. I'm going to get this young lady to stay with Across the concourse, the camera on Lucy's bike picks up a tussle at the taxi rank. Have you ever been in trouble with the police before? But Lucy's still trying to get to the bottom of the knife allegation. Has she had a knife at all? Not as I know, no. Okay, why would someone phone us in and say that she had? A member of the public has tipped off one of Lucy's fellow officers about the taxi rank tussle. And Lucy joins him to see what's going on. I mean, you can't write down already, haven't you? Yeah? Because you've got the type we've got. Because you were winding yourself up a little bit, haven't you? Well, yeah, but like... Because you've refused to take it. I did. I went but up to the taxi, it's, yeah. it's his property if he doesn't want to take it. I know, but I went up to the taxi. I said politely. I was like, I'll give you £6.10 right now to take me as close yeah. as you can. That's like a 20 minute walk. But the best thing to do is just walk home then. Well, I'm going yeah. to. Walk home quietly now or I'll give your mum a ring to come and pick you up. Because you're not old enough to be drinking, are you? Everyone was sent safely on their way and no charges were brought. I find it quite sad when you've got kids out late at night and drunk. They don't realise what they're doing and that's when things go wrong. I would hope that my kids weren't in that situation. I've no doubt they got up to things I didn't know about, but if they were out, I'd always know where they were. Um, and I was never conscious of them ever coming home in that state. Birmingham. There aren't many places that biker paramedics can't go. Steve Harris has just dealt with one patient on a platform at New Street Station when he's called to the concourse. He whizzes along the platform and takes the fastest route possible. 212, I've cleared on this first case. Uh, however, I've been informed there's another patient up in customer reception. I'm just heading up there. Over. In seconds, he's out of the lift and by the side of a man who's feeling sick, faint and dizzy. Here. Oh, it's a problem. I'm getting tingling sensation down my hand, hands, sort of like um, every like about 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, Constantly start shaking just for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been sick twice. Yeah. And it's just today? Um, it's been on and off the last couple of days. Are you at work or are you travelling uh, or what? I was uh, travelling, well, I've just come back from a job interview. You would have been stressed? Could have been. It's a bit uptight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the pins and needles and that that you describe, yeah. and the, um, apart from the vomiting, uh, could yeah. be put down to stress. I'll do one or two checks on it. After a few checks, there's nothing untoward, but Steve is still concerned. Where are you going to get back to? Uh, Telford. Uh, how far is Telford? Uh, 
train journey time. Half hour. Half hour. Half hour. Um, what I'm thinking is that we ought to pop you down the hospital. They may be able to give you something to stem those feelings, check you over, make sure that everything is okay, um, and better prepare you for that journey. I'm not happy to just put him on the train and leave him, uh, so we'll get him checked and uh, hopefully sorted. The patient at New Street got home safe and sound after a few checks at the hospital. Four-year-old Mohammed's thumb is healing, but he probably won't be going near a sewing machine again.